We are set, ready to rock for this Madden Ultimate Team matchup. And these guys on your screen, ready to rock. Some his game. And speaking of the game, let's get right to it. Here's the Bills kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. Ten McNair. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Malcolm Jenkins. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Brandon, when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach and talked about how they wanted to begin this game offensively, they talked about their script, didn't they? 10 to 15 plays, the first 10 to 15 they had on their script. Nowhere on the script was there throwing an interception, I have to believe. And this one caught by Delaney Walker. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. They go with Lynch right side, and he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That was a nice play by the defense, but the offense can't let that one play define them. Let it go, move on, and start over again. Well, now they'll try the end run. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. On play action, now Breeze. And this is caught at the eight. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at him with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop him. They'll run again with Lynch. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Calling a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in hot. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call a timeout. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They go back to the air here after the INT. And they didn't wait long to take a shot there, that's for sure. But it falls incomplete, and it's second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. He finds some open field here. <laughs> it's a big run that time by Bell. 41 yards. But for those worried about whether or not Le'Veon 
Ryan's explosiveness would return. I think we just had our answer. ACL? What ACL? This guy's back running as if he were totally healthy and never had an issue. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. And he's obviously a great franchise quarterback. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. Carlos Dansby in there to sack him for a loss of six. From the gun, here's McNair. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Jake Shum to put it away. Well, he just threw an interception last drive. Nearly another pick. And now the up man has it. It's a fake. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time. Fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come over. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to have the defense have to hold but it But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Well, now we'll see what his offense can do. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. They've got a second and nine to start things out. Here we go. Five, nine, On second down, McNair. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Carlos Dansby in there to get him. His second sack now of the afternoon. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Carlos Dansby able to disrupt yet another pass play, his third sack of the afternoon. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play caller because a one play drop. Looking for his tight end play and it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33 yard line. And now San Diego getting set to go. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to give a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, a flat-out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? I do know that owners, when they watch their quarterbacks running with the football, they usually hold their breath because that's the franchise. But when you're getting that kind of a game, hard to argue against calling it. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up, 
A lot of guys used to be. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. We'll come back to San Diego after this timeout. Out of the gun, it's McNair. And time Montgomery has it complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. They're going to hurry back to the line now. And those first downs do add up. The offense keeps the ball moving downfield and keeps their defense on the bench, giving them a chance to rest. And he'll get them inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll make it a second down. Here we go! They'll run the option left. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. They'll run the option left. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. And now they're in the hurry up. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only... And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Larry Fitzgerald, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Chargers are able to strike for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, a great job to put themselves in front. And now, you see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They come out with one back and three tight ends. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Breeze now to throw. He sets to fire deep. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. And now another one thrown incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and they just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. So here we go on fourth down with Breeze. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Jason Barrett, and they will take over at the 26-yard line. So that is three interceptions now in this first half, and you hate to ask the question, but yeah, let's be honest, we're thinking about it. Do you need to go in a different direction next series? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's not really his stature here. But he has been their starting quarterback for this game. So they've got to weigh things about who's behind him. Do they think he can snap? Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. Let's go! to throw McNair and that is incomplete seven seconds remaining CJ Fedorowicz the intended receiver and that brings up fourth down and I think the end result knocking the ball away was a prop and they're going to try this again it's another fake 
And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. And the Bills offense comes out ready to take over. And with great field position here, chance for some points before the break. That's prime real estate. Just have to decide how they want to try and take their shot to try and put those points on the board. He's going to go up top again. And incomplete on the deep ball. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. Now Breeze on the bootleg. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Alshon Jeffrey past the 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Alshon Jeffrey, 79 yards. And the Bills are an extra point away from taking the lead. Good pass, clean catch, and a house call there on the fly route. And not that much room to operate. So that tells you about his acceleration. We always talk about being able to go from 0 to 60 real fast. Took him less time than that to get to top speed and complete that play. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, and you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started. Oh, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. Now this is picked up by the Bills. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them. Big tackle, knock the ball free. Anything you can do to slow them down. On the handoff, Lynch. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Marshawn Lynch taking it in from the 20. And the Bills use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14 to six. Here's the Bills' kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he will be marked down right there at the 20-yard line. So out come the Chargers. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he would have to all the way in. Touchdown, San Diego. 
C.J. Fedorowicz, 53 yards. And the Chargers are within a two-point conversion of tie in this game. They'll look to throw. Try to force it to Allen, and it's intercepted. And nothing but daylight ahead. He's at the 50, 30, 20, 10. And he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as head play backfires in a big way. The kick unit on here for the Chargers as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Bills getting set to go. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch-counterpunch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got to a good rhythm. You see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. They fake the give. Here's Breeze. And that will be caught, but out of bounds. Out of bounds, ruled incomplete here. I think you have to chalk that one up for the defense there. Someone right on the spot. Excellent coverage. Didn't leave him enough room to come down inbounds, even though he did catch the football. Now a play fake. Breeze. And he's got Fitzgerald. And he's brought down after a good game. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really do. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Sean Jeffrey. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Bills will extend their lead. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And now San Diego getting set to go. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, you gave up the score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back to our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. They go play action here on first down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So second and 10 here. On second down, McNair. And he's got it over the middle, Fedorowicz. And all the way in, touchdown, San Diego. C.J. Fedorowicz with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Chargers are able to make this a close game again. Here we go. They'll try and throw for it. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. 
And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now out come the Bills. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Breeze now to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. And we're back now in Mission Valley and San Diego. Fresh set of downs here. On first down, Breeze. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. It goes as a pickup of 23, and it'll give the Bills a first down. So another snag for Fitzgerald, who in 2015 became the youngest player at age 32 to hit 1,000 receptions. He's piling up some more. Well, the way he's playing today, it's almost like he's trying to get a second 1,000 just in one contest. And when they're operating this well and clicking like that, <laughs> well, that's a big reason why they're winning the game. Sammy Watkins, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Breeze again here on second and ten. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, an incomplete pass certainly doesn't look like a good play. <laughs> For the guy throwing it today, as many interceptions he's thrown, he's got to feel a sigh of relief that the ball actually hit the ground and didn't go in the other direction. Now Breeze on third down. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. 11 yards for number 11. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You keep the ball until you catch it trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Here's a give to Lynch. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And now it's fourth down. I know ultimately that feels like a good defensive play, but I know it's really not. They had a chance to keep points off the board. Now they have a chance to kick a field goal by missing that shot. Yeah, especially at this spot in the field. He's got to be upset he couldn't come up with that INT. And all the game. Fails, it's incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it, it doesn't work. And now San Diego getting set to go. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Terrell Suggs in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Play action. It's McNair. 
He's going to find his running back. It's complete. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like it. And he lost the football. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Breeze now. And Walker with it over the middle. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. In the red zone this time. They'll run with Lynch. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Marshawn Lynch, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bills use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Here's the Bills' kickoff unit out as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Getting down to the end here, they have a two-score lead. Barely, but it's a two-score lead, so that probably makes you as a coach feel a lot more comfortable right now, doesn't it, Charles? It does, but it doesn't mean now you go out and run option or some kind of wild double reverse or anything like that. But you do know that if anything does go haywire, you're still in control of this game. I want a double reverse, don't you? <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day where we actually see something like that in this situation. We'll, we'll see what happens here Bree's gonna throw here oh the ball comes out on the hit but they'll say it's incomplete so much of this game is about leverage we always talk about low man wins in the trenches well it's like that in just about every position and sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away and that's exactly what happened there throwing now is and intercepted maybe the turning point they need a great read and it's picked off and they will take over at the 29 yard line and now San Diego getting set to go. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again. But they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly. Then they'll take it from there. On second down, McNair. And he comes back with one complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Let's go! On first and 10, McNair. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Obviously a tough spot here. They need a lot of luck to win this game, but still a small chance. They've got to make sure they get the ball to the sidelines, get out of bounds, preserve clock. Oh, a 
Just grab for the football, and he's going to come down with it. A very solid gain of 27. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the... And this is caught, and he's in for a Charger touchdown. Ty Montgomery, 33 yards. And the Chargers have made this a one-score game. And it's no good. Well, that could be a critical miss here in a one-score game in the fourth. So with just under 40 seconds to go, you figure this is going to need to bounce their way if they have any shot. And this is going to be recovered by the hands team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And now the Chargers are going to signal for another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Oh, a design run for their wideout. And an alley to run. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. First play of the drive, excellent run. Just sets up wash, rinse, repeat. Another first down. A carry now for Lynch. And he's across for the late touchdown. And in the final seconds, that one should just about put a capper on this game. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable. But do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the stretch, especially on defense. But that touchdown there, you've got to feel good about your chances. Here's the Bills' kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now Sandro getting set to go. They can't do much at this point, partner. This one is going to go down in the loss column. You don't make up for what has happened during the game in this sequence here. Maybe you hand it off and let someone run the ball if you, if you so choose. But otherwise, just kneel down, call it a day, and try and prepare going forward. There was no shyness there pushing the ball downfield, but I like the coverage on the play in good position. And when you have a 50-50 ball, who's going to come down with it? I like the way they made the play, came across, and knocked it away. And this is dropped and incomplete. Well, there's a metaphor for how this one is gone as time has run out on this ball game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one, certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, 